okay screen is visible yes sir okay so we were talking about prevention of air control and how we can control the air pollution so these are some steps which we can do in order to reduce the air pollution so this is not that much important from examination point of view but next slide is very much important this is air prevention and control of prevention act 1981 so you need to remember when they uh, apply this air pollution prevention and control act so this act was uh, came in power in 1981 so the key feature of this act were so in this act there were certain rules and certain things uh, for central government uh, of air and air pollution related issues so various guidelines were there for central governments in related to air and air pollution so in this act there is also some rules like we need to uh, do research about the cause and impact of air pollution spreading awareness to stop air pollution and to establish central and state boards and empower them to monitor air quality and control pollution so these three and four features first one there were some guidelines for central government like how to tackle air pollution next is to start research about air pollution means from where the uh, pollutants are uh, uh, releasing maximum and spread awareness regarding air pollution and to establish certain ports like for example central pollution control board is there cpcb where you uh, usually make your pollution certificate for your car for your scooty so all these boards are uh, formed under this act air prevention and control of pollution act 1981 okay so primary pollutants and secondary pollutants i think this slide uh, is uh, coming again this we already discussed now the central pollution control board very much important the central pollution control board is an autonomous body under the ministry of environment for uh, forest and climate change MOEF and CC. Once they ask full form of this Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. This is an independent ministry which work for environment. It, it was established under 1974 under the Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1974. So the important thing here, like Central Pollution and Control Board, here they have written to establish central and state boards and empower them to monitor air quality and control pollution. So what's the difference between these two? Please don't, con uh, don't confuse in these lines. The central pollution and control board was formed under water prevention and control of pollution at 1974. So in 1974, they realized that we need to form some act in order to prevent water pollution. And in 1981, they came with this air pollution uh, prevention act so this is water pollution prevention act this is air pollution prevention act so the central pollution control board and uh, this central pollution control board was formed under this act 1974 water prevention act and after some time when this air pollution act was established this central pollution control board has been given extra power in order to control the air pollution also uh you understood this no sir yes sir okay see central pollution control board was established under this act so if anybody is uh we are establishing anybody any body means any uh, educational institute or any board we are going to form 
we need to form it under certain act for example if a private university is there you will always see in brochure like this university is formed under the uh, private university act 2001 of indian government so similarly this pollution board was also formed under 1974 water pollution prevention act and in 1981 under the act of air pollution this board has given extra power like this board will also cover the air pollution related issues <clears throat> okay now certain spcbr also there state pollution control board and pcc's pollution control committees all these work together central pollution control board state pollution control board pollution control committees these all committees work together to form certain laws about how to control and prevent air pollution okay now this is very much important what is air quality index so as we all know uh, now this issue is very much uh, uh uh expressive or uh everywhere air quality index so air quality index is a number used by government agencies to communicate to the public how polluted the air quality is and how polluted it is forecast to become directly we can understand this it is the measure of air pollution air quality index is measure of air pollution now this measure is based on air pollutants please uh, try to remember this these air poll eight pollutants are very much important uh, very much important pm10 what is this pm10 Uh, particulate uh, matter ten. Particulate matter which are having diameter ten micrometer. What is PM two point five? Particulate matter which are having diameter two point five. Next, SO two, sulfur dioxide, NO two, oxides of nitrogen, ozone, carbon monoxide, NH three, ammonia, and lead. So. how air quality index is determined they will check for these eight pollutants in the air if these eight pollutants are present very much in the air it means the air is very much polluted and uh, if these eight pollutants are present very little it means the air is very clean so out of this pm10 and pm2.5 which is more dangerous pm10 pm10 why no sir i think these are harmful in sequence means i know only lead is the less harmful that's why okay when i was teaching you about pollutants i told you na pm 2.5 and smaller particle are very much dangerous for us because because of their smaller nature because of their smaller size they will directly go to our respiratory system and they can they can cause inflammation there pm 10 is not that much dangerous because pm 10 it is uh, not very small as compared to pm 2.5 and it usually got trapped inside our nose inside our respiratory passages uh in mucus but pm 2.5 is very small it will directly go to our respiratory system and it will cause inflammation in the respiratory system this we already discussed you remember that yes sir now i got it then yes. sir other sir can you sequence it means uh, after the pm 2.5 what will be the more uh, harmful okay this pm10 and pm2.5 these are particulate matter so we can compare these two because these two are having same uh working they will just go to our respiratory tract but so2 nox o3 coh ns3 and lead these all are gases they will directly go to our blood 
so these gases are more dangerous because they are directly going to our blood now which gas is dangerous which gas is not this we can't compare because every gas has certain harmful effect okay sir but i saw one of the question came in previous year that means recipients we have to arrange what is the uh, more harmful than what is the less that frequency is there i saw question Okay. That's a, yeah. Most harmful for uh, uh, that question was what is more harmful for uh, environment and greenhouse gas? Uh, I think that question you are talking about. Yes, like sir. Right. More harmful. So for uh, greenhouse uh, greenhouse condition. Uh, after a few slides, we will discuss that greenhouse condition and we will just discuss which gas is more harmful. Okay. So this air quality index, also we need to remember, like if air quality index is between 0 to 50, it is good. If it is between 51 to 100, it is satisfactory, 101 to 200 moderate, and similarly poor, very poor, and severe. One more thing you need to remember, like if the air quality index will be good, there will be no impact on the health of people residing in that area. If it is severe, it affects healthy people and seriously impacts those with existing disease means if you are living in an area where air quality index is very severe, means the AQI is between 401 and 500, then it will also affect you if you are, even if you are healthy, your health will start deteriorating. And if you already have a certain disease, then you are at very much risk. So these colors you need to remember. Like for satisfactory, it is light green. For moderate, it is yellow. For poor, it is orange. For very poor, it is bright red. For severe, it is blood red. So this you need to remember. Air quality index, how the air quality is, color code, and possible health impact. So the in Delhi, the air quality index is 326. Now it will be increased. In Mumbai, it's around 204, and in Chennai, it's 263, as recorded on Diwali. Now, Bharat stage emission norms that I was uh, talking a few days ago, like if you are driving a car, if you are driving a scooter, then your car or scooter should follow certain rules in order if you want to drive that scooter or car on public road they need to or it need to follow certain rules first there was bharat stage one so this bharat stage one was taken from euro one what is this euro one these are rules that are being uh, passed in europe so those rules are just also applied in our country under the name Bharat stage one. So these are applied in 2000 and uh, there were certain rules like your, your car should not use more than this much petrol, your car should not emit more than this much carbon dioxide, more than this much lead. Now the question is now we are in Bharat stage six and we skipped Bharat stage five why we skipped Bharat stage 5? Because while applying Bharat stage 4, we were very much late. This Bharat stage 4 was started in 2010 and it was supposed to be applied everywhere till 2015. But we got late and it, it was applied most of the places in 2018. So you cannot just for two years change the whole rules. So then they directly started Bharat stage six. So don't confuse in this. These are just rules. Like with time, the technology is increasing. The technology is becoming uh, more uh, careful towards the environment. So 
to use that technology rules are there so that people will use new new technology and car companies will not use the old technology in order to save money okay next is noise so noise in undesired level of sound so in 1981 air prevention and control of pollution act was uh, established and it was amended in 1987 please remember this year in 1987 it was amended and noise was also added as a pollutant it means if very much noise is there it is also a pollutant it is also changing the changing our environment world health organization define noise above 65 decibel as noise pollution so any noise above 65 decibel will be called as noise pollution so these all are sources of noise pollution this is also very much important 65 decibels okay these are harmful effect of noise it cause psychological and physiological disorder is any one of you uh, living near any industrial area where there is lots of noise Yes, sir. Are you asking anything? Means living means are. Is any one of you having house near to any industrial area where lots of noise is there, or railway track? No, sir. I have not. Okay. If any one of you is living, they must might have feel this the psychological impact and the physiological impact of this noise. Persistent headache. frustration and uh, irritation all these are some psychological things which are associated with long term exposure to noise so sound levels more than 150 decibels if the sound is more than 65 decibel it is considered as noise by world health organization but if it is more than 150 decibel like when there is take off a jet plane or rocket huge sound comes so that much sound can damage our eardrums and can cause permanent hearing disabilities sleeplessness increased heart rate breathing stress these all are some effect of noise permissible noise levels in india also very much important we have a previous year question on this in industrial areas during day time you can uh, make sound up to 75 decibel and during night time it should be within 70 decibel in commercial areas during day time you can make sound up to 65 decibel and uh, 55 during night time in residential area during day time 55 decibel and during night time 45 decibel what is the difference between industrial area and commercial areas sir in commercial area we can consider means uh, generally town city where is the market in commercial yeah. and industrial where industries are there yeah industrial area means where industries are there any manufacturing industry or something commercial area means where any commercial activities is going on for example any market any fair these all are commercial area residential areas means where we are all living in our society or where our houses are there it is residential area so these values are also important so no need to confuse in this we start with 45 55 then 55 65 and 70 75 next water pollution and its control impurities in water make domestic seaways unfit for human use they include suspended solids colloidal material dissolved material so water pollution just like air pollution is change in quality of air similarly change in quality of air is water pollution and uh, the major source of water pollution is our domestic seaways so domestic seaways are uh, fecal matter 
have impurities that make it uh, unfit for human use because it has suspended solids, colloidal material, dissolved material. These all are these all things. Uh, suspended solid may include sand, slate, clay, etc. Colloidal material may include fecal matter, bacteria, cloth, uh, paper, fibers, and dissolved materials. Some nutrients like nitrate, NH3, phosphate, etc., etc. And class, class. Yeah. Uh, you have class. Okay, just a minute. Okay, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, the important thing in this is biological oxygen demand. And uh, you can expect some question on this. What is biological oxygen demand? So, biological oxygen demand is, for example, in a glass of water certain biological organic matter is present biological organic matter it can be human stool it can be uh, particles of any vegetables fruit rotten vegetable fruits so how that human stool or how that rotten fruits or vegetable will be cleared from that water so what happened certain bacteria and certain uh, microorganism they degrade that organic matter so what is biological oxygen demand amount of oxygen needed by amount of oxygen needed by those bacteria in order to degrade the organic matter present in any water understood so, sir, you are saying that bacteria reduces the organic matter, right? Yeah, bacteria needs oxygen in order to degrade the waste material in any water. So, the amount of oxygen those bacteria needed is biological oxygen demand. So, if you understood, then uh, tell me if biological oxygen demand is more then the water is more polluted or less polluted? More polluted. More polluted. More polluted. Very. So if you understood this, then this is only biological oxygen, biochemical oxygen demand. Now, what is algal bloom? This is also very much uh, important. Algal bloom, actually, if there is a water body and you are continuously uh, filling that water body with sewage in sewage human waste is there various uh, rotten vegetable fruits and various other uh, domestic uh, 
wastage are there in uh, domestic seaways. We are talking about domestic seaways. It means the wastewater that coming from a home, not from industry. So it will include human waste, some uh, remains of fruits and vegetables, and other things. So if some water body is there and you are uh, continuously filling that water body with uh, domestic sea waste, then in human stool also some uh, waste, vegetable and fruits, nutrients are there. Nutrients are there. So if we are filling a water body with our uh, human sea waste, what will happen nutrients will increase in that water body and because of that nutrients algae will grow because they are getting nutrition so algae will grow algae is this green color small small uh, organism you have you might have seen in some water bodies that turn green so why this is happening because algae are getting lots of nutrition there and they will gradually reproduce and will fill the whole water with their green color so it is known as algal bloom so what happens during algal bloom for example Sir? yeah so how they are getting nutrition like these waste uh, uh, products are given we are filling that water body with domestic sea waste. And what is there in domestic sea waste? Human waste. In human waste also there is lots of nutrition present. That's why uh, we also make manure because uh, by human waste. Because nutrients are there in human waste. Fruits and vegetable remains. In that also lots of nutrients are there. So if we are uh, just... Uh, filling a water body with domestic sea waste, lots of nutrients will be available there. Understood? Yes, sir. Now, what is the problem with growing of algae? What will happen if this algae will grow? What's the problem? Now see, for example, this is a lake. I'm just drawing a cross-sectional diagram so if algae will cover all the lake from upside oxygen now cannot get dissolved in the water so after some time the fishes living outside they will die because of lack of oxygen other plants which are inside the water, other animals which are inside the water, they will die because of absence of oxygen. This is known as algal bloom. Next, what is biomagnification? This is also very much important term, biomagnification. Now see, as we already know, food chain is there. And uh, you heard of this DDT. DDT, mercury. That white powder, sir, DDT. Yeah, DDT is a white powder that is used as an insecticide in crops. Insecticide in crops and uh, mercury is also used in some industries. So these DDT and mercury, when they go, uh, try to understand, when they goes inside the body of a living organism, our body is not meant for uh, like how to tackle these things, mercury, DDT, because these things are not meant to be uh, uh, going inside human body. There is no mechanism to remove these uh, toxic and mercury and DDT. This is happening because of our own mistake. Nature is not... Uh, filling our body with mercury and DDT. So we don't have any mechanism. For example, we have mechanism to remove carbon dioxide from our body. We have mechanism to remove excess fecal matter or stool from our body. We have mechanism to remove excess water from our body. Because these things are meant to be inside our body. And when these things will be in excess, our body have mechanism to take these things out. But this mercury, DDT, these things are never meant to be 
be inside human body so no mechanism to keep these things out of human body once these things goes inside your body these things are there there is no mechanism to take these out now see in water the water bodies near the fields or water bodies near the industries near the fields the ddt you are spraying on your plants you are spraying on your soil will leak through that soil to the water body and ddt will be accumulated in water body similarly if some industry is there which are releasing mercury and these things in water uh, this will increase the amount of ddt and amount of certain toxicant in water so through water as i already told you in water phytoplanktons are there which are producers so this will take a small level of ttt now zooplankton are feeding on producers so zoo, uh, if a zooplankton is feeding on tertiary producers there will be more amount of ddt in body of zooplankton now small fishes one small fishes is feeding on hundreds of zooplankton in its life so in body of small fishes the uh, amount of ddt will increase and large fishes are also feeding on large number of small fishes so in their body the amount of ddt will also increase and uh, those fishes for example vulture they are feeding on large fishes so what will happen in their body also after some time the amount of ddt will increase so this increasing amount of ddt or increasing amount of any toxicant uh just a minute okay so this increasing amount of ddt in successive tropic level is known as biomagnification understood sorry sir i actually i was disconnected due to some annoying network problem i understood sir what you are telling means that uh, green planktons do planktons but um, what is that my um, biological magnificent magnificent yes so what? means mercury ddt what you told about that past at tell early i could not get it Uh, this only I was explaining. Right? The amount of mercury and DDT will be increased in successive tropic level. If there is zero point five DDT present in producer, so a zooplankton is feeding on two three producer. So amount of uh, DDT in the body of zooplankton will be zero point one five. in small fishes so because small fishes are uh, feeding on large number of zooplankton so it will be 0.45 so similarly while going upward the amount of toxicant will increase in the body of organism this is known as biomagnification okay now <clears throat> which species is having highest amount of ddt in their body vultures ha uh, vultures fish eating birds and what does ddt do this ddt disturb calcium metabolism in birds because of ddt body of birds cannot retain calcium and because of that calcium their eggs are now getting weak so once eggs will be weak they will not able to reproduce because their eggs will be destroyed just after uh, laying of eggs so this is the cause of declination in bird population now this is also important eutrophication eutrophication is natural aging of lake by nutrition 
enrichment. Now see, uh, just a minute. Okay. This eutrophication is also very much important terms. See, a lake is there. After some time, more nitrogen and more phosphorus will be added to that lake from phytoplankton from producers. And uh, after with time, the nutri nutrients in the lake will increase because uh, you can simply understand it like The phytoplanktons are uh, absorbing sunlight in order to make energy, in order to make biomass. So with time, the amount of biomass in the lake will increase because it's not going anywhere. So after some time, the lake will, uh, <coughs> the lake will lose its depth this is known as eutrophication. I will just try to understand you. For example, this is lake. This is the depth of lake. And uh, with the course of time, in millions, billions of years, they have phytoplankton that are accepting sunlight and that are producing food from the sunlight. Slowly, with course of time, that food will after some time that food will be converted into detritus and will be just uh, it will got accumulated in the bottom of river and after some time with course of time the bottle of the lake will be uh, filled by these humors will be filled by these detritus or biomass so after some time, the lake will be destroyed by itself. It is known as natural aging of lake or eutrophication. Understood this? Sorry, sir. Can you repeat it? Yeah. See, eutrophication is natural aging of lake by nutri nutrient enrichment during course of time the lake is absorbing nutrient from sunlight so during course of time this nutrient uh, will be converted into biomass and that biomass will be accumulated on the bank of the lake this is known as eutrophication you can directly understand like eutrophication is natural aging of lake by nutrient enrichment if the process is not clear you can simply understand it like aging of lake is eutrophication. Why? Now see, uh, just for an for an example, you can take example of a room, and uh, two people are living there. After some time, with course of time, that two people will reproduce, and uh, uh, they will give birth to third people. With course of time, their population will increase and that room will be filled from the number of people. Similar things happening here. In lake, plant will be there after some time that plants uh, will reproduce and they will increase their number. Fish will reproduce and they will increase their number and everything will be settled down at the bottom of lake. During course of time, million billions of, after million billions of years, these layers will start getting thick and the depth of lake will decrease. This is known as eutrophication. Understood? Yes, sir. Okay. okay, so these ecosand toilets, ecosand toilets are, as I already uh, explaining you, with the help of human waste, these are producing compost for their fields. And these are known as ecosand toilets. 1974 water prevention and control of pollution act is uh, applied it's very important so please remember this <clears throat> now let's talk about greenhouse effect so what is greenhouse effect uh, 
see this solar radiation is coming to our earth and uh, during day time we have this solar radiation but if whole solar radiation will be bounced back to atmosphere if all solar radiation will be bounced back to atmosphere then there is no heat remains in the night time again i am repeating this is incoming solar radiation during day time we are getting sunlight if whole sunlight will be bounced back after hitting earth there will be no source to trap that sunlight then in night time we will have deficiency of sunlight deficiency of heat and our earth temperature will be around minus 18 degrees celsius but this is not happening we have a good temperature in night time also it is because during day time earth is receiving solar radiation and when the solar radiation is trying to uh go beyond earth after getting uh, reflected from earth surface some gases they are returning this radiation again towards the earth understood okay sir means you are saying uh, means uh, sun sun in sunlight means going radiated after the okay, earth getting some gases oh uh, see i will uh, will again try for example this is a mirror and some sunlight is falling on this mirror it will be reflected back okay similarly earth also every body act as a mirror so sunlight that falling on this earth will also reflected back to the solar system and uh, there will be no heat remaining in our earth atmosphere but this is not happening for example this is earth certain solar radiation are coming to our earth and when these are reflected back some gases are again reflecting this solar radiation towards earth and now the solar radiation are trapped inside our earth atmosphere that are making good at good temperature to live in so is this greenhouse effect is good or bad good sir why because it's maintaining temperature because it's, it's maintaining te temperature temperature in night it's, time it's maintaining temperature in night time but everything is good in balance if the number of these gases which are trapping the solar radiation will increase then the number of solar radiation amount of solar radiation will also increase and it will increase our uh, this effect is known as greenhouse effect means some gases are trapping solar radiation this is known as greenhouse effect and because of increased number of greenhouse gases the temperature of earth is continuously increasing and that is known as global warming understand what is global warming yes sir okay so during past three decades means past 30 years temperature is increased by 0.6 degree celsius because of increase in these greenhouse gases now what is the effect of these greenhouse gases one is climate change as we all are seeing climate change in summer we are expecting uh, there is lots of heat during rainy season there is no rain during season when there should not be rain it is very much raining melting of coral ice caps himalayan snow caps means if temperature of earth will increase the ice will melt and it will directly rise the sea level because all the rivers are directly going into sea so future impact will be rise in sea level now el nino effect what is el nino effect el nino effect means warming of pacific ocean near the equator 
and because of this an abnormal weather pattern throughout the whole world this is known as el nino effect uh, because of global warming the pacific ocean will also uh, having high temperature than normal temperature usual temperature it will have certain high temperature and because of this high temperature more water vapor will be created in pacific ocean and these more water vapor will cause the abnormal weather pattern throughout the world it will cause rain somewhere it will cause drought somewhere it is known as el nino effect <coughs> Okay. So these all are ways to reduce the greenhouse effect, use of fossil fuel, improve efficiency of energy uses, reduce deforestation and plant trees, slowing down the growth of human population. These all are ways to reduce the greenhouse gases. Now the question which gas is having maximum impact? So first one is CH4. Next one is CO2. Next one is N2O. And next one is CFC. So the gas who is most responsible for this greenhouse effect and global warming is methane, CS4, then CO2, then N2O, and then CFC. Okay. So climate change, I already tried to explain what is climate change because of this uh, green increasing greenhouse effect, the temperature of earth is increasing slowly and it is causing um, increase in temperature that is causing climate change. So uh, just a um, minute. So human forced climate change, this is what we were talking about. Human can affect the climate by changing the gases in the atmosphere. If greenhouse gases will increase, temperature of earth will increase and because of that increase in temperature, climate will be changed. Means winters will be less cold and summers will be more hot. So this is climate change. Now see, two pictures are there. One is 1928, one is 2000. And it is taken on the same time, 1928 and 2000. You can see how much change is there in the snow. So these all are impact of climate change. Sea level will rise. Ecosystem changes effect on certain species certain species which are used to live in cold environment they will after some time they will be uh, not between us effect of farming you can see during the rainy season there is no rain and uh, farmers are uh, they are very much bothered they are very much bothered because of this uh, climate change next is melting of polar ice and Coral death. What is coral death? Some species near the sea, uh, they got dead because of this climate change. Okay, so this is all about climate change. Now we will talk about what is AC train. So Two exits are there. So, do you know about these two acid HNO3 and H2SO4? What is name of this acid? No idea, sir. This one, anyone from science background? Okay. 
just a minute. Okay. So, if rain is there, rain is water, and what is the formula of water? H2O. This is formula of water. Now, if this water is coming directly, this is normal rain. But if there is lots of pollution and presence of two gases, SO2, sulfur dioxide, and NO2, nitrogen dioxide, then this water start reacting with these two gases. If this water react with sulfur dioxide, it will form H2SO4. This is known as sulfuric acid. And if this is reacting with NO2, it will form HNO3. Please remember the name of this compound, H2SO4 and HNO3. Just tell me. Okay, so this H2O with SO2, it will form H2SO4, sulfuric acid, and with NO2, it will form HNO3, means nitric acid. So after some time, this acid will be mixed with rainwater and will directly come to the ground as rain. This is known as acid rain, understood? Yes, sir. Sir, that NO2 means nitrogen oxide? Uh, nitrogen oxide. These get produced by your car, by your scooter, in industry. These gases got produced. So more amount of these gases means more amount of acid rain. Now, this acid rain have certain impacts of on living organism, on non-living organism. One of the prime example of acid rain is Taj Mahal was uh, completely white few years before after some time the color is changing to yellow it's because of acid rain only so in human also acid rain cause lots of problem like asthma chronic bronchitis and uh, similarly for water animals also it is causing lots of problem we just need to remember what are the gases, what are the uh, pollutants responsible for acid rain. Next, ozone depletion in the stratosphere. Next is ozone depletion. So, as I already told you, bad ozone is formed in troposphere. Why it is bad ozone? Why the ozone in troposphere is known as bad ozone? And why the tropo, uh, ozone in stratosphere is known as good ozone? It absorbs the ultraviolet rays, no sir. Yeah, in if the ozone is present in stratosphere, means around 40-50 kilometers away from us, then it will stop ultraviolet rays coming from the ground. But if the ozone is present in troposphere, it is a kind of pollutant. If we inhale the ozone, it will cause serious health impact to us. So the ozone present in troposphere is bad ozone and ozone present in stratosphere is good ozone. 
one more thing for example you are measuring uh, for measure of everything there is a unit for example you measure length in kilometer and uh, weight in kilogram similarly the thickness of ozone how thick the ozone layer is in stratosphere it is known as dobson unit du so please remember this the thickness of ozone is measured in dobson unit now what is ozone layer depletion ozone layer depletion is none other than okay, just don't For example, this this is layer of oxygen present in stratosphere. It has certain width, and uh, you can assume like this: this is our Earth, and this is layer of ozone. So after some time, we have two, three things: CFC. Chlorofluorocarbon HFC hydrochlorofluorocarbon. It is written here. Chlorofluorocarbon HFC hydrochlorofluorocarbon. What this CFC will do? This CFC will start breaking the ozone layer and it will decrease the thickness of ozone. And uh, this is known as ozone layer depletion so what is the prime source of the cfc from where the cfc is coming sir carbon dioxide uh, from well, oh, so sorry from the source of the cfc uh, source of cfc refrigerator or what we are using and some other materials yeah refrigerators are prime source of this cfc so this cfc will go to atmosphere and will break the ozone layer and after breaking of ozone layer the more depletion of ozone layer more uv rays will come to earth and these uv rays are very harmful for humans and very harmful for animals and this whole process is known as ozone layer depletion now the most important part in this is montreal protocol what is montreal protocol montreal protocol is a international treaty regarding ozone layer depletion and all the countries they came together and they signed a treaty like we will reduce emission of chlorofluorocarbons and other ozone depleting chemicals so this was Mon montreal protocol it was signed in canada 1987 so this is also important now few other uh, things are there where we are not using the resources properly and uh, these are not that much important first is water logging for example we reduce the land and water is accumulating above the land this is known as water logging deforestation you all know okay next is biodiversity conservation two types of biodiversity conservation is there in situ conservation and ex situ conservation for example if you want to save a species first what is biodiversity conservation what do you understand by this term biodiversity conservation so everything is uh, in the state of homeostasis means so what atmospheric level gases level we can consider everything when it's homeostasis uh, state that is called biodiversity conservation um, no biodiversity biodiversity means 
what is biodiversity biodiversity means different types of plant different types of animals living in our earth so with course of time with our action these plants and these animals are at risk of extinction for example certain animals like tigers because of habit of hunting the number of tigers are now very low very some plants also for example sandalwood plants because these plants are very much costly people are cutting down these trees and there may be times when we will not have a single tree of sandalwood there may be some time when we will not have a single tiger living in our earth so they can be extinct because of our habit and uh, for example now 5g is there so 5g is impacting most of world species so birds are losing their lives and there can be a situation when all the birds will die and they will extinct so to prevent that we need to conserve the animals we need to conserve the plants so conserving plants and animals from extinction is known as biodiversity conservation two types of conservation is there in situ conservation and ex situ conservation so what is in situ conservation and what is ex situ conservation in situ conservation means you are conserving certain plants and animals in their natural habitat for example a national park is there uh, can you name any national park from india mangrove uh, forest mangrove uh, forest in odisha kendrapara also there and another uh, sundara उंड्री outside their natural habitat and calling it as a nat national park and giving them protection in their natural habitat this is in situ conservation so in situ conservation means we are trying to protect animals and plant in their natural habitat where they naturally live so national park sanctuaries biosphere reserve cultural landscape natural monuments these all are in situ conservation presently we have around 18 biosphere reserve 106 national park and 567 wildlife sanctuary now what is ex situ conservation ex situ conservation means off site conservation we are trying to conserve or organism outside their habitat for example a botanical garden is there botanical garden means a garden where thousand of species of plants will be present we have zoo zoo is also kind of ex situ conservation because we are taking the animals from their natural habitat and trying to protect inside a a uh, small building or inside a small place so this is ex situ conservation genetic resource center we are just preserving the sperms and ovums of uh, different animals zoological park wildlife safari park botanical gardens theme banks cryo preservation these all are kind of ex situ conservation so once they ask the question like if a animal is at very much risk of extinction which conservation you should go for ex situ conservation or in situ conservation ex situ conservation why ex situ conservation because uh, in their natural habitat they are suffering problem na that's why we need to oh, mean maintain that type of environment which they really need that is called ex situ yeah then we will go for ex situ conservation 
okay so this is all about environmental issues some things that i mark please revise those things again uh maximum chances of coming in exam it will be like this water prevention act or air quality index these things they used to repeat in exam so this slide i already shared in group and uh, now we have remaining just two more important things one is uh, protocol and other is current affair so i was actually about to take class in yesterday uh, evening but uh, rao sir told he is having already class of two uh, hours so it was not possible today you have quiz uh, or any class at uh, 7 pm uh, no sir rao sir will take class uh, means 5 o'clock 5 uh, o'clock he will take then uh, rest uh, schedule are not confirmed till now means uh, today means after 7 o'clock we have no class how much will know okay so we will we will finish off sir you please take yeah yeah we will do this class at 5 uh, 7 to 8 or 9 and we'll finish in this environment syllabus okay okay so that's all for today thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir